Europe is at war. 77 years after the guns fell silent in the Second World War, the continent is back on the battlefield. All the guesswork, all the diplomacy, all the confusion has ended. Russia has invaded Ukraine. The attack began early this morning. Most of Ukraine was fast asleep. They were woken up by loud explosions. As it turned out, they were cruise missile strikes. What did they target? Ukrainian military installations, their weapon depots, their air defense system, their airports. Putin's strategy was precise and effective. Take out Ukraine's defense and support hubs. For the first few hours, there was confusion. What experts call the shock and awe factor. Ukraine did not know what was happening. Was it a full-scale invasion? Was it just aerial bombardment? Or was it a blitzkrieg? Soon videos emerged on social media, videos like this one. Most of them follow the same pattern. First a flash of light, then a large cloud of smoke. The classic example of what an airstrike looks like. And this happened all over Ukraine. Let me pull up a map for you. This map shows all the cities targeted by Russia, the capital Kiev, Kharkiv and Kramatorsk in the east, Dnipro in central Ukraine, Mariupol on the Black Sea, Odessa also on the Black Sea, and Ivano Frankivsk in the west. Is there any strategy to this list? Experts say there is. Crimea in the south is already under Russian control. The east is also effectively in Putin's grasp. Between these two areas is a vast belt of land, Ukraine's southeast, and that's what Russia seems to be targeting. If Odessa and Mariupol fall, Russia can cut Ukraine off from the Black Sea. Plus, it can create a strategic land corridor. How does Vladimir Putin plan to do it? So far, he's following the military playbook. First, take out air defense systems, then soften ground positions with shelling, and finally send in the troops. All of this may sound tactical and overwhelming. So let me simplify it for you. Russia is ripping up international laws and norms. It has abandoned diplomacy. It has rubbished peace. And it has violated the sovereignty of its neighbor. In this war, there will be bloodshed. So far, Ukraine has reported 50 deaths, 5-0, 40 soldiers plus 10 civilians. There will be refugees. There will be hardships. And the whole world knows who to blame the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. Around 5 a.m. today, he addressed the Russian public. He announced military operations against Ukraine. His excuse, denazification of Ukraine. I decided to conduct a special military operation. It aims to protect people who have been bullied and subjected to genocide by the Kyiv regime for eight years. For that, we will strive for demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine and will bring to justice those who committed multiple bloody crimes against civilians, including Russian citizens. Now, just to be clear, President Volodymyr Zelensky is Jewish. His family was killed in the Nazi Holocaust. Vladimir Putin is accusing the same Zelensky of running a neo-Nazi regime. As far as excuses go, it's a pathetic one. But in war, truth does not matter. What matters is your military might. And Russia's military supremacy was on full display. Their missiles pounded Ukrainian cities. The Kremlin says only defense installations were targeted. But even precision strikes are not 100% accurate. Let me show you some pictures. The first set is from Kharkiv. You can see shrapnel and damaged garbage cans in a playground. Clearly not a military target. The second set is from the capital, Kiev. Again, this looks like a city square. You can see shops and roads around it. Clearly not a military target. Air raid sirens were booming across Ukrainian cities. The people may have been prepared for it, but when the bombs actually drop, anything can happen. By now, Ukraine had gathered its wits. President Zelensky first worked the phone line. He spoke to all his Western allies, US President Joe Biden, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, European Union leader Charles Michel, Polish President Andrei Duda. Then Zelensky addressed his people. Years later, we may look back at this moment when a career comedian became a wartime leader. Zelensky did his best to rally his country. 
This morning, dear citizens, this morning has gone down in history. But the story is different, both for our country and for Russia. We have severed diplomatic relations with Russia. Ukraine is defending itself and will not give up its freedom, no matter what Moscow thinks. For Ukrainians, independence and the right to live on their land according to their will is of the highest value. How is Zelensky mobilizing his army? Any Ukrainian willing to fight has been asked to join the army. In other words, general mobilization. Citizens have been empowered to carry firearms. Healthy citizens have been asked to donate blood. Ukraine is not giving up without a fight. By noon, the first wave of strikes ended. There was a brief lull. And during this time, two things happened. One, there was a massive exodus from Kiev. These pictures should give you an idea. There were long lines of vehicles queuing up to leave Kiev. You can barely see the end of this traffic jam. That's how big it is. And two, Russian ground units started crossing over. We're talking about tanks, soldiers and military vehicles. They crossed over in two sectors, from the south in Crimea and from the north in Belarus. Take a look. All these vehicles have one thing in common. The tanks, the trucks, all of them, they have a mysterious marking on them. It says Z, the letter Z. What does the Z stand for? Well, it could be a code name. It could be a special mission. The Kremlin won't say what it's about. Alongside the bombardment, a narrative war is also underway. Russia is claiming major strategic gains. They say Ukrainian soldiers are fleeing that Ukraine's air defense system has been taken out. Toll claims even for Moscow. Ukraine says they have shot down five Russian jets and one helicopter. And both sides, needless to say, have rubbished each other's claims. The fear is today's attack is just the beginning, that Putin's end game is much bigger than this, perhaps completely invade Ukraine or install a puppet regime. Both scenarios end with a devastated country. How are the Western allies responding to this? And their first reaction was along expected lines, criticism and sanctions. The second step was military posturing. NATO has activated, quote-unquote, defense plans for its eastern allies. Poland is deploying troops to the border. So is Hungary and Slovakia. Another neighbor, neighbor Moldova, has declared an emergency. Now, this is all aimed at protecting NATO territory. Frankly, it's of no use to Ukraine. Which brings us to the big question, what happens next? We have identified three sectors that could become flashpoints. The first, of course, is Kiev. The capital is without a doubt the biggest prize. The second is Southeast Ukraine. Most Russian strikes have focused on this region, Southeast Ukraine. Like we said, the idea is to link the rebel territory with Crimea. And three, the Black Sea. And this could be a game changer, the Black Sea. If Russian warships join the fight, Ukraine could be cut off from the waters. Kiev wants to stop this. It is asking Turkey to shut the Dardanelles and Bosporus Straits. Ankara can do this. They've already condemned Russia's invasion, but they're silent on Ukraine's request. Typical Turkey. The next couple of hours are crucial for Ukraine. The West will huddle to decide on a strategy. Putin's plan will unfold gradually. By Friday morning, there will be more clarity on where this is going. No doubt, the whole world's focus will be on Ukraine. But for the people living there, a long and sleepless night beckons. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.